What's up guys? So today I got something pretty exciting to play around with. I'm using a camera that was released back in 1984. Uh, let me, you probably can't tell what this thing looks like, but if you look in the mirror here, maybe kind of get an idea on how old school this is. So yeah, 1984, and it uses these VHS C tapes. Kind of a challenge to find this camera um, that actually still works. Now, I did a whole like review on this thing. Um, if you missed it, it's right up there. Today I'm doing just like a vlog. I wanna use it and try to do some edits with it and see what the process is like. Um, I ordered some cables so I could get this all copied over to my computer so I could use Adobe Premiere to do some editing, but um, <laughs> I only have 30 minutes per tape. Luckily, I could re-record over everything, and I do have some extra. Oh yeah, I forgot one last thing. This is the camera from Back to the Future Part 1, uh, the camera that Marty had. That was like another reason why I wanted this, because I love the Back to the Future movies. Alright, we're heading out now. I made sure to get some extra tape just in case I run out. We're gonna go get some lunch. <laughs> I could barely get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> It says open, come in. This is probably so out of focus. And uh, this is a five and a half pound camera, so kind of hard to do this right now, but. Uh, I should switch arms every few minutes. Or, or a selfie out. stick, or like a body harness or something. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go for a little surf taco. You going in first? Yeah, you going in first. <laughs> but I'm gonna get her right there. Two of those. What are you getting? I'm getting the teriyaki chicken taco and the chicken tender taco. Alright, cool. No, yeah, it's delicious. Shrimp taco. Yeah. Awesome stuff. challenges with vlogging with this camera is the boot up time so the battery is not going to last that long so I want to preserve the battery by turning it off every chance I get when I want to film something interesting like say these ducks that I just captured it takes a while for the camera to turn on there's a process you have to turn it on first and then you have to hit the record button but then you also to activate actual recording you have to hit record and play at the same time and then to actually record video with the taper uh, turning you have to hit the other record button it's a long process so it's about 30 seconds maybe a little more to actually get it running it's got stabilization of course it does no this is the shakiest thing ever <laughs> So I actually think it's pretty cool filming with this camera. Uh, it's obviously completely different than filming with a point and shoot or a DSLR camera, but you know, people back then weren't really doing video editing with home movie cameras. They were just, uh, you know, filming little home movies going on vacation and whatnot. My dad had one of these, but not the mini VHS tapes, the uh, larger VHS tapes. So the, the camera's actually a lot bigger. So I did play around with that back in the day, but I'm not sure how the process is going to be like with uh, editing. So that's going to be the challenge. Figuring out how to do this whole edit and making sure that I could do that and capture it to my computer. Uh, so now what we want to do is get some coffee. <laughs> Video grabber. This is like 28 bucks on Amazon. Let's see what we got. So we're looking at a audio video 
converter to USB and also have S video in there. But it's cool because I got this USB here, so that's gonna plug into the computer. This is gonna to attach to that camera, and I should technically be able to output the tape from there through here to the USB onto my computer. Okay, so I got it onto the computer. It captured it, it wasn't too hard to do. So I used the software that actually came with this. So it comes with uh, drivers here. You can also just get them online. I don't have a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM on my computer. All right, so I'm heading to the podcast studio. We're going to do an episode on the creative basement. We're going to be talking about like old cameras uh, we're gonna hang out with some uh, some friends it's gonna be kind of cool because we're gonna be talking about how we used to uh, always film like things together when we used to uh, shoot on VHS tape and mini DV and how the editing process was done back then this is like prior to YouTube days so uh, it's, it should be an inter interesting discussion see how it goes but uh, yeah I'll see you there sir by boss all right so uh, <laughs> we got the gang here we're doing a podcast Wait, really creative basement that? Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> integrate this uh, into that the podcast. Over, so, so uh, chance, yeah, we're doing the podcast today. We got uh, Chris, Brandon, and Kevin here. Uh, might not be wide enough. Need a longer arm. Uh, so yeah, this is the whole setup. I'm gonna use this camera. That one over there. Let me zoom it. Yeah. So let's get started. <laughs> so the podcast turned out pretty awesome. Uh, it was a little long. But again, if you want to check that out, I'll have it linked up there. Um, so there was one thing that I left out in the review, and it was because I just assumed some information. And the reason why I assumed it is because my dad's camera that he had, the first one in 1989, was the big v VHS tape camera. So the camera was huge. You know, it was, it was bigger than that. It didn't take the small tapes. It was the big VCR, VC VHS tape. Um, then after he got that in 1995, he got the camera, or 94, the camera with the, the small VHS tapes, which is this, the VHS-C. So what I found out after doing the review, I should have did this before, was that this camera is in fact the first VHS camera. Yes, it's VHS-C, but no VHS cameras existed prior to this so this is actually the first VHS camera so I was just kind of more amazed when I learned that uh, before this camera though there was a Sony Betamax camera in 1983 um, it did not have playback capabilities so this one came out in 1984 had playback capabilities um, so it's kind of a cr kind of crazy to think back because I thought usually things start out huge which I was doing like the big VHS tape would uh, you know, they make a camera for that? But it also it started out with the small tapes. Um, so 1987 was the first full-sized VHS camera uh, that was released. 1987. So I had it completely backwards. Uh, and the funny thing is, is uh, people like this. They were small, compact these cameras, but the tapes only recorded for 30 minutes, and that was the problem. So. People wanted to be able to record more, and then the only way you could do that is if you used a bigger tape, so you could do maybe two hours or three hours on those tapes. So I wanted to throw that out there. I wish I threw that in the review. So now that I know that this camera was the first VHS camera with playback capabilities for recording, uh, I feel like the camera is, a, is actually ahead of its time, and especially releasing the first camera to do you know those sort of things and then also have a character generator integrate with it to overlay text and all that it's kind of crazy to think about being that this was the first VHS camera and obviously it just advanced from there on so um, yeah I think it was an awesome uh, idea to get this camera because I actually learned more about the whole video uh, history of uh, camcorders that was also a, a great thing to learn about but uh, also playing around with it and just learning how the thing worked and how to actually you know uh, use it with today's technology meaning editing on a computer uh, cool stuff but I think that's really the end of this vlog I appreciate you guys stopping by if you enjoyed this uh, leave a like um, and if you haven't already like I said check out the review I go 
very more in detail with that um, review. And if you want to check out the podcast, go for it. But uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by, and I will check you out in the next video. Bye.